Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session. Thank you, Emily. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, so the title of my demo is uh, Handling Resampling Methods for Handling Health Data. Uh, my name is Olawale Awe. I am the Vice President of Global Statistical Engagements of uh, the Lisa 2020 Global Network, uh, situated at the University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, first of all, uh, what I want to achieve in this demo is to tackle the problem of imbalanced data which is quite uh, popular in medical science. Uh, it is a common issue which can significantly impact the performance of uh, the reliability of uh, machine learning uh, models, especially uh, when the number of instances in disease uh, diagnosis and prediction for instance, when the number of instances in um, uh, uh, the, 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 of, of the uh, minority class, the minority class is always the one we are interested in, which is the number of people having the disease uh, is quite, quite, uh, quite smaller than the majority class, which is the number of people not having the disease. So you see that the um, algorithm tends to be biased by predicting uh, or favoring the majority class. And this can lead to uh, a lot of uh, uh, misconceptions, especially in uh, disease uh, diagnosis. So failing to diagnose or predict rare conditions uh, due to imbalanced data may uh, come with several severe uh, um, damages, especially uh, it can lead to uh, sometimes even legal issues, adverse effects, including lack of trust in medical AI systems and potential uh, legal is issues and poor diagnosis. Now, there are some potential strategies to address these uh, challenges, which include resampling the data sets and uh, using appropriate models, like assemble models, which I'm going to talk about today. Uh, the resampling methods we're going to talk about includes uh, oversampling, undersampling, and hybrid sampling. An oversampling means that you uh, create synthetic data sets to boost the minority class. Undersampling means that you reduce the majority uh, class so that it will be at par with the minority class. And then hybrid sampling combines the two methods. Now, let's go ahead to demonstrate these uh, methods today. Now, we first begin by loading the uh, essential libraries in R. Uh, Carrot Assemble, uh, Tidyverse, ML Bench for uh, model comparison, uh, Tidyverse for data wrangling, and uh, Carrot. I'm going to talk so much about current. I'm going to use current today. And then flex table in case you want to uh, depict any of your data sets as a table. And then ML tools for uh, comparing the metrics and TikTok for de determining the amount of time taken for each model to run. And then rows. This is where we or the tool used for conducting the uh, resampling, and then ROCR for uh, plotting the 
AU uh, area under the curve of uh, receiver operating uh, characteristics. Now, first of all, you ensure that you have your uh, working directory working properly. You have you are in the right working directory. And uh, for me, I have uh, my working directory uh, in a folder called clustering. And so I don't need to set it up again. And the data I'm going to consider today was obtained from uh, the South African National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey of 2012, which is known as Science Data Set. It is publicly available on this link. Uh, it contains majorly predictors of uh, overweight and obesity among South African uh, uh, adults. And the data was analyzed in one of our past articles uh, published in Machine Learning with Applications, uh, published by uh, Elsevier. Now, let's go ahead and load the data set. I call it O, -O, -O data. And the dimension of this data is 671 by 32. So I have 31 predictors in this uh, data set. Uh, let's look at it. And uh, let's just see uh, uh, some. You can see, let's see the names of all the variables in the data. We have uh, about 31 predictors, like I said, of of overweight and obesity. And uh, we want to see the aim here is to two aims here. Number one or three. Number one aim is to compare the performance of 10 machine learning models uh, before and after uh, correcting for data imbalance. Number two is to determine the most essential uh, risk factors among all these predictors that would be useful in predicting uh, overweight and obesity. This is the target variable. And uh, we want to see which of these uh, features are highly essential for predicting uh, overweight. And then we are going to see how uh, the, uh, 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 the machine learning models, uh, uh, assemble methods, whether assemble methods will perform better than the other machine learning uh, models for uh, 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 in uh, uh, correcting for uh, data imbalance in this data set. Now, uh, we can summarize the data set as follow. We see that this data has no missing values. You see, I'm assuming that your data has been pre-processed properly. So the data has no missing values. Uh, Correct is so powerful, it's so wonderful for uh, doing all these things from beginning to the end, whatever steps you want, either to preprocess the data set, to uh, visualize, run your models, compare your models. Carrot is so wonderful. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is to actually specify the target variable and plot it to determine uh, data imbalance. Let's, I'm going to show you the data imbalance in the data right now. Now let's see, you see that uh, I renamed the model. So the data is structured in such a way, the target variable is uh, labeled as overweight. So zeros and one, zero for those who are normal and one for the respondents who are obese. Now, there's a certain threshold 
of BMI that will be computed. Uh, probably if they are above the threshold, maybe of 24, BMI is uh, weight divided by height uh, squared. So if they are above that certain threshold, then the participants or the respondents are considered obese. And that is the uh, label as one in the data. So we want to actually see uh, the data imbalance here. Let's see whether the number of people that will be obese uh, are more than the people that are not obese or vice versa. Usually in medical uh, uh, science or in disease uh, analysis, the number of people that have the disease are not usually as much as the number of people that do not have uh, the disease, as you can see in this uh, diagram here. You can see the number of people that are obese are lower than or is, uh, is lower than the number of people that are normal. And that is how it is for mostly uh, most uh, 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 problems. Now, if we can see that this will cause a great problem if you just go ahead and use this uh, data as it is. So we need to do something to uh, make up for this uh, class, this low class, such that it won't be a problem. As a matter of fact, let me pro plot the proportion. Let me look at the proportion. You can see a high proportion of people are normal as compared to the uh, lower proportion. We have 78 by 22, 23% uh, are having the, I mean, are having the disease. They are actually obese, whereas 78% are actually normal. And the machine learning algorithm is bound to favor the normal class, the majority class. It's bound to give biased results if something is not done. And that is essentially what we want to achieve in this demo. We want to look at how we can correct for this data imbalance uh, while uh, running our algorithms. Now, such that the true positive rate will be well favored. This is a positive and this is the negative, the normal one. So that will favor the true positive rate, that is the recall of the models. Now, I'm going to use current, like I said, current is uh, a package which can be used for your machine learning algorithms. It does a lot of um, uh, uh, algorithms in, in, in there. It has several, let me, uh, if you want to look at the number of algorithms in Kari, we have about 239 kinds of models in Kari. As you can see here, you can easily uh, run any algorithm uh, through this uh, current classification and regression trees. Now, uh, let's go ahead and just pick just 10 algorithms, classification algorithms, by the way, and see how they behave. The first thing I'm going to do is to uh, sample the data, is to uh, partition the data into two. I have the train sets and the test sets. So I'm going to use the 7030 divide to uh, partition my data set so that I can use the test set to evaluate my model. I'm going to run the model based on the 70% uh, trained data set, and then I'm going to run, evaluate the models on the remaining 30%, which the algorithm have not seen. So you can see 
This is the 70 percent, 480, and then this is the uh, uh, one, uh, 30 percent, 191. Now uh, I'm going to prepare my uh, uh, training scheme first of all by uh, setting up my cross validation uh, scheme. I'm going to use repeated uh, cross validation method. I'm going to save the predictions. I'm going to have uh, tenfold uh, cross validation with five repeats, so making fifty in all for each model. So I'm going to run this, and it's going to be useful across board. So let's begin by training the models without, no naturally, without uh, any resampling technique, without co correcting for any uh, data imbalance. Let's see how the results would uh, be. Now, I'm going to set C so that I can reproduce. I'm going to use one, two, three, four, I see. Now, this tick here is just to help me is from the TikTok uh, uh, li uh, library package to help me determine how much time my model took to run, the TikTok library. Now, let's see if you like, you can include it and you may not include it. Now, let me see um, the, let me run the first model, which is the SVM, support vector machine. So let me run it. So the target variable as a function, I'm just gonna put a dot here, as a function of all the other uh, more uh, uh, features. Then the data is trained, I'm using train. Then the method is SVM radian. And like I said, the current can preprocess your data at a go. And then the train control that I've uh, already specified. Now, let me see, it took about uh, 10 seconds to run. Then here is the model. Uh, let's see the accuracy and the other uh, metrics. Look at this, having a high accuracy of 74, uh, I mean 76%, and uh, but it's performing poorly. This is the confusion matrix. It's performing poorly on the true uh, negative uh, rate. And uh, let's see the uh, others. Now, uh, I plotted the uh, uh, confusion matrix, and then I also did some uh, 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 variable importance to check the variables that are mostly important in prediction of overweight and obesity in, the, in this uh, exercise. Now, it's showing that sex is the number one, followed by diastolic blood pressure, and then there's weight gain attempt, followed by uh, the geotype, where they live, and then family history of diabetes, and so on and so forth. So this is essentially how Carrot sets up the uh, our models. Then I'm going to go ahead and run the others. Let's see random forest the same way. The only thing that will change here is the method, method RF, method RF, the same way for all the 10 models. And I'm going to predict using the test data to evaluate the model, then I'm going to have the confusion matrix where uh, we can obtain all the other metrics. I'm going to put uh, everything here so that it can also give me all other metrics. And so I'm going to say mode, I said mode everything so that I can have all other uh, metrics like uh, F1 score, 
which is the harmonic mean of recall and uh, sensitivity uh, of recall and specificity. And then uh, we have precision and we have, uh, sorry, the harmonic mean of uh, recall and precision is the F1 score. And we have uh, uh, other metrics like balance accuracy, which is, is actually good for imbalanced data, which is the average of uh, uh, sensitivity and specificity. Now let's see the results. I finished running. Let's see the confusion matrix. Actually, if you want to see the table, you can run this one separately. You can see the results here, still 76%. Uh, then let's see the table. And then let's see the plot. And then here is saying that their steady blood pressure is the best, not sex anymore or gender. Now let's go ahead and do for uh, logistic regression. I'm using a uh, generalized method is GLM. Then following the same process, I run this. So you can use this for any disease. Or here we are using it for obesity. You can use it for any disease. You can see in another uh, 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 code here, I have malaria presampling. You can use it for several other diseases as you may wish. You can practice with this. Now, I'm going to also uh, uh, run this to check uh, the confusion matrix. And then I'm going to have, you can see, it is at uh, this one is not zero, but let's go ahead. This is just still the original uh, 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 model without resampling, without doing anything to the imbalance, data imbalance. Now let's go ahead and do KNN, KNN, K nearest neighbor algorithm, and then let's have a uh, the confusion matrix, you can see the confusion matrix, the true positive, the true uh, negative, false positive, and uh, I mean false negative here and false positive here. Then the fourfold plot and the variable importance of this model as well. Then let's go ahead and do neural network model the same way. The only thing that will change here is Nnet. Current is so uh, wonderful. Now, let's have it. It's taking a little bit more time to run. Let's wait for it a bit. Uh, while you're waiting, I noticed there are a couple of questions in the chat. Oh, questions. Maybe you could take okay. a quick look let's, at. Let's see. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. I I have most of the codes in my um uh, GitHub. But then. I will, I'm sorry, I didn't put this uh, updated version there, but I can uh, send it right away so that you can download the one there. Now, why current not partnership or tidy models? Yeah, you can also use those ones. You can also use those ones. Current is another, is an option. Okay, so, uh, but meanwhile, the codes are ready. They are ready made. You can run them. I'm going to share these codes and the data set I used 
so that you can, in addition with the GitHub uh, repo, I usually, uh, I just want, wanted to explain first so that you can follow, because if you are trying to do it at the same time, the uh, time may not be enough. Now, the neural network has finished running. Now you can see we we'll plot, we we'll have the fourfold plot. Then we'll move ahead to the naive bays very quickly, the same way the naive bays, uh, which is another powerful uh, model for classification. You know, this is basically a classification exercise. Uh, we are going to, uh, we'll have considered a regression uh, uh, model or regression models if the target variable were numeric or continuous. But here, the target variable is categorical. That is why it is a classification exercise. It is categorical. Either they are obese or not obese. Now, uh, or, or, or normal. Now, let's see uh, for linear discriminants analysis, let me make this one a factor. Show that it's a factor. Let's make it, uh, I'm sorry, factor. So linear discriminant analysis. Okay, that runs so fast. Let's go ahead to a uh, linear vector quantization linear vector quantization, LVQ. These are powerful models. So you do it the same way. Remember, you can use this for any disease. Now, because we have not taken care of the imbalance, the data imbalance, notice that most of them are churning out almost similar results, you know? So that is why the problem of data imbalance is so, uh, it's important to deal with, in especially in medical analysis, like I've explained before. Uh, but some scientists still, uh, they overlook this important area and just uh, run their models like that. Now, I'm going to train a boosting model, a boosting uh, model. These are assemble techniques. What do we mean by assemble methods? Assemble methods is a more powerful method that combines predictions from different uh, algorithms together in order to capitalize on their weaknesses and not to uh, 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 boost the prediction. So two major example methods used here are boosting and uh, bagging. So I run the boosting and the the, the 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 boosting is here, the bagging is here. So the method used is tree bag here, and for boosting, I use other boost, a popular one called other boost. There are other ones known as cat boost, uh, light GB, GBM, and others, but I'm using other boost here. Now, after running all these, what we're going to do is to tabulate or plot the results. Now, let's see all the examples, all the results. We'll list all the models that we have uh, uh, run earlier. Then we'll put them in this resamples function, and then we'll run them and then we'll be able to, this will enable us to have a clear plot that compares the, all the results to rank them in order of uh, performance. Now, 
let's uh, uh, run this. Let's just wait for it to finish running. So uh, I summarize the results first, then I do the uh, 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 box on whiskers plot of uh, the results. And then I am going to compare, you know, see how they behave. Then let me just tell you something about Kappa. The, 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 the... Oh, okay. Let me try to share my details. The Kappa statistic, the Kappa statistic is one, uh, it, it is one uh, uh, metric that we want to use to accompany the accuracy, to accompany accuracy. It accounts for the agreement between the actual and the predicted. So it is particularly important in the uh, imbalanced data sets where there's uh, a high possibility that the algorithms will favor the majority class. So a model, for instance, that always uh, predicts the negative uh, 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 part would have 90% accuracy, for instance. As you can see, we had 76% accuracy, high accuracies uh, in all our uh, models. But then you can see the kappa, notice the kappa, the kappa will have, will be approximately zero. So kappa is between minus one and one. If it is uh, from zero to one, it is the more closer to it, to one it is, the better, you know. So kappa is uh, a good metric for providing standardization for comparing the uh, 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 performance of all the models. And uh, it is useful when dealing with uh, uh, multiple models. Now, and we usually use it uh, together or in addition with other metrics like I've, uh, uh, we have calculated before as uh, recall F1 score and all others. Now, it provides another dimension for understanding the reliability and robustness of our models. Another uh, metric we can compute is the AUC ROC of the area under the receiver operating characteristics. And this is what I demonstrate here. This is how to use it, but one thing you must do here, when predicting, you must uh, uh, put time equals probability. Save the predictions as probability because it works with probability. Now, the uh, library that you need is uh, uh, the one we installed before which is uh, uh, ROC, ROC app. So you need to install this library or this package before you can be able to run this aspect of the, uh, uh, of the uh, code. Now, uh, it's just very straightforward. You, know, you predict, for instance, for KNN, we will predict using the test data, type equals probability, and then we create a prediction object. This is the prediction object where we we'll put the predictions there. This is the target variable. What we are predicting is the target. And then we, uh, with a positive uh, 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 part, then we'll calculate the performance measure. Uh, this function calculates the 
performance measure, true positive rate and false positive rate. Actually, a, uh, the uh, plot of uh, AUC, uh, ROC, is uh, the sensitivity against uh, specificity, which is TP, true positive rate versus false positive rate. Then we plot and we, uh, we also uh, calculate the area under the curve. You might want to have the area under the curve and then it will show the area under the curve. And that is another uh, wonderful metric that we can use uh, alongside other metrics because in imbalanced data sets, we don't trust accuracy because accuracy usually uh, supports uh, the uh, positive, I mean, the negative uh, part. Accuracy is not a good measure to favor the negative, I mean, the positive part, which we are usually interested in the minority class, which we are actually mostly interested in, in medical diagnosis. So that is why you need to know how to use all these other metrics like TAPA, like uh, AUC, uh, ROC, and uh, others like balance accuracy, Matthews correlation coefficient, log loss, and so on and so forth. Now, the, sorry, the boosting model, because it's an ensemble, like I said, it combines several predictions, prediction from several models. That's why it could take longer time to run, you know. So the, another uh, method we can use, another metrics we can use is, uh, uh, log loss, which is not covered here in this work. Now, let's see, uh, after this first aspect, this is where I begin to resample the data set. So what I do here is to uh, take the same data in rows. We use uh, the oven.sample function in the package rows to uh, do this. Now, oven dot sample, the same uh, 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 function, data equals train. Then the only thing that will change here, almost the most thing that will change here is method equals over. Watch the way I do it, then, dollar sign data. Now, the this is very important. Method equals over. Now, we have a new data set over. And I'm going to plot this new data set. By the time I plot this new data set, you will see that the, uh, the uh, 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 the data is now balanced, will now be balanced. It's no longer skewed. You'll see that I've been able to create synthetic uh, data sets to measure up with the, uh, uh, the majority class, you know, so that both of them will be almost equal, if not equal. So that is what happens here. Let me just explain it so that we can run it all over, I mean, at once. And then I can share the code with you. Now, you will now begin to build the model all over again. Notice what will change here. So here now, we are building the same set of models with the oversampled data, which is over. Now, let's see what happens here. I'm building support vector machine again, the same process, the same process. 
Look at it, the same process, data is now over, no more train. So the data now is over, the one I created here, not train any longer. So I'm going to follow the same process and uh, you'll see slightly you know, or improved results. Now that is for support vector machine. And then you're going to see another one. Let's see for uh, random forest, the same thing. Notice what changes here, data equals over, not data equals train anymore. The same thing, let's see the third model, logistic regression, data equals over, the same method. Let's see the other model, which is k nearest neighbor, data equals over. So this is essentially what is going on here. If there was, uh, if we have more time, I will have allowed you to practice taking up another data set like I did here, malaria data set or cancer. I have another data set on uh, lung cancer, you know, and you practice, you just change the data and then you practice with this particular code. Now, you can see the uh, title we are giving it, oversampled KNN, oversampled uh, uh, random forest, and so on and so forth. So this is what happens here. The same thing, the same way. Let's continue. You see, train the naive Bayes model, just exactly the same thing, and then train the linear discriminant model and train the linear vector quantization model method LVQ, Carrot has provided all that. Carrot was originally invented by Max Kuhn in the early uh, uh, millennium. So we see that this Carrot is very, very powerful. Just one of it to run all your models. If you had 20 models to compare, this is how you will set them up and everything will run at once. In fact, you could uh, uh, select all and run at once and you see the results right below. I will show you in a moment how to set up the result or how to compare the final results. Now, let's wait for it the minute. Okay. Any questions so far? It could also be done with tidy models. Thank you, uh, Nelsie. Yeah. Okay. Oh, great, great. That would be great. Aha, uh -huh. that's a good point there. I was expecting this point by uh, Maui. Uh, he says that, uh, he, he's saying that one of the problem is uh, he had with small techniques that since it only creates synthetic observation in the minority class and not considering the majority class, it creates noise in the data. How do you, that's a very great question. That's a great question. Now, there's a uh, there has been great debates on the uh, smooth, on the smooth techniques. I even published a paper on that. But uh, the smooth does not really create just a uh, synthetic. Uh, 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 it doesn't create just majorly synthetic data sets. If you notice, it will reshuffle from the existing minority class, it reshuffles. It's not the ones created are not completely new, but is a mixture of the old and the new. So it reshuffles uh, with the existing uh, limited uh, 
data that we had before. But then uh, there is still uh, some kinds of concerns about this metal. But we see that it's better than the undersampling metal, where you have to cut off some data sets from the majority class, you know. So smart is still uh, very good. And there are so many other techniques, you know. That is why we have the no free lunch theorem in machine learning. You need to compare your results with several other uh, methods if you are not uh, satisfied with the SMOT technique. SMOT is not the only method that can be used. Okay, so this is essentially what we did. Now, let me quickly run you through because of time. Then we compare all the models. You can see over LR model, over MB model, over, over, over. That's just what is different from the previous one. Then we call this one results one, and then we run. Oh, finally, it's here. I'm just going to run everything at once after explaining to you. Now, on the sample data, look at what goes on here. The same way, look at what I did here. Data equals tree, but method equals what? On there, on there. That is what is going to change there. And then I'm going to begin to run in the same way, the same way, the same thing. Now, let me see if I can. Now, you can see the proportion of the original data set. Let's see the proportion of the uh, on the sampled data set. Let's see the proportion of the on the sampled data set. Let's see it. Let's see what happens now. Look at it. Look at it. Almost equal. 48 and 51. Look, look at that. Let's see the proportion of the oversampled data set now. Uh, oh, I needed to have run that up there. I didn't run it. So if you come across any error, don't be afraid. You, you just need to take a closer look at your uh, codes and rerun. Now, let's see it. We, are, we have about uh, uh, 10 more minutes to go. Now, let's see the, ah, uh, this one here, line 304. Okay, that's what happened. Then you can see, you can see the plots. You can see they are now almost equal. You see that we have been able to uh, 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 make up for the uh, minority class. You can see. Can you see? Now, that is what we are doing here. It is now this new data set that we're going to use for our modeling. It is not good to go ahead and just use the original data set, especially when you have data imbalance like this, the data imbalance like the one we talked about before in your data, and then you just present the results. You need to do something about your, your data. Now, this, this is the one I was talking about. Now, let's see uh, the comparisons. Now, let's see the comparisons. Uh, all these ones are, 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 are there. Yes, this is the plot. Now, what if I was to plot under? If I had plotted the under, what would have happened? Let me just copy it because of time. Let me take it there. Under, what would have happened, right? Is the same way we have been able to uh, push up or, I mean, or minimize this majority class to level up with this one. That is what is called under sampling. But it has been highly criticized, especially in medical science, where it is difficult to get data. So for you now to now cut off available real data sets again, that might not be nice. That might be greatly disadvantageous. 
That is why the uh, small techniques and other oversampling techniques have been majorly used in data science. Now, look at look at this. Uh, let me let me let me just say. Uh, uh, plot this, let me call this over, uh, under. I'll call this under and then plot it. Uh, under, I'm sorry, I didn't spell it well, under, and then plot it. You can see what has happened. It has reduced the available data sets. For me, I don't like this method. So you are going to run it the same way and then you are going to have uh, the same uh, result. There's another method before we go in uh, less than uh, five minutes, in five minutes, there's another method I wanted to introduce you to, which is a uh, hybrid, hybrid sampling, which is a combination of over and under sampling. Now you will discover that this method even uh, gives better results than either under and uh, uh, or over. So that could be an answer to your question. Oh, let me see. So one thing about this is that if I don't run it from beginning, it may not run. So let me just try to select all these and see how to run in uh, three minutes so that I can just uh, point it out to you. Now, let me run from here, from here actually, okay? So, let me see, okay? So just run everything like that at once, okay? So it's busy now, oh, so fast, okay? More are coming. So we're gonna do under, under, under for all of them as well. And then we're gonna compare uh, in this place to see the best performing. First of all, you summarize the result, then you see the best performing. Then hybrid, what is happening in hybrid? The same thing, but you use both. For under over sampling, we use over. For under sampling, we use under. For hybrid, we use both. And this is what happened. Then we'll follow the same process. We'll follow the same process. The neural network is running now. And uh, we'll follow the same process. And uh, then we'll have it now. That's, oh, it's still running, it's still busy. Then at the end, we are going to try to, now it's on discriminant analysis. At the end, I want, I'm interested in seeing the plot that shows the model comparisons. Let me see some comments before. Yeah, this is a general question. Please feel free to answer in the comments. What is the general, as someone said, what is the general imbalance? Uh, uh, what is the uh, official or unofficial criteria? when working with predictions of imbalanced data in terms of uh, medical analysis. Yeah, uh, for me, this is, a, uh, this is an interesting question that has been asked several times. Um, in most cases, we're not going to have uh, the same for the two classes, but we can still, when you have like uh, 50, 48, or uh, 50, I mean 52, 48, 55, 45, 
is still good. For me, uh, maybe 55, 45 is still a kind of uh, a balance. But anything beyond that, it's not uh, good. And like I will say, it depends on you. You can always experiment. If you want to still balance it, there's nothing wrong. Even if it is 55, uh, if 51, 49, if you still want to balance it, there's nothing wrong in that. Once you can explain your result. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone has given us a preprint. Uh, the research is still ongoing in this area, you know. Someone says the imbalance correction may even be harmful. This is a great debate. And uh, there are so many arguments in that regard that you must correct the imbalance. And uh, there are so many arguments saying that you must also uh, 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 balance. But then if you don't want to balance, there are other methods you can use. Let me just say it here. You can decide to go for metrics. There are four methods I will state here. Number one, you can use an alternative metric. Use alternative metric, like uh, the ones I've mentioned, uh, like uh, balance accuracy, uh, uh, MCC, uh, and uh, 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 precision F1 score and so on and so forth. Then another thing you can do if you don't want to balance the data is to use uh, the uh, some great algorithms like assemble algorithms. Some algorithms can cater for this data imbalance. Use advanced algorithms, advanced algorithms, like uh, assemble methods, like boosting, even random forest and all that. You can use that. Then there's another thing called cost-sensitive learning, where you attach weights to the minority class. That's another thing you can do. So this field is so broad, uh, but very, very important. Cost-sensitive learning. OK? So these are things you can do if you don't want to balance the data. Of course, number four is uh, so do, do you have any other thing to add? Any other addition? Uh, number four is the one we are considering. You can resample. You can resample. Resample and uh, do some uh, cross-validations. You know, combined methods. Resample, then uh, number five is a uh, combined combination of all these uh, methods, combination of a uh, method, combination of methods, right? So this is this is very this is a very interesting uh, area in medical research. Uh, okay, okay. Now, now this is this is what I have, and that is why I I didn't want to to share it as well. I wanted you to listen first. I will advise that after now I will find a way of sharing with Emily, or you can watch the video, and uh, you can practice, especially with another uh, disease or the data set you are working with, you can practice this code. Feel free to use and reuse this code with your uh, data sets. I can assure you that everything will run, but some of them may take time like we're having here. So uh, please go ahead and uh, 
continue. Let's give room for research, I mean, for questions. Um, and we can uh, collaborate as well. I'm available. Uh, yes, suggestions on choosing weights. Yes, I'm also doing some research in this area. We can meet up later and collaborate. Uh, my email is here. And uh, uh, this is very simple. Palawale aware at gmail.com. Uh, you can find me also on LinkedIn. Palawale aware. And we can uh, uh, talk more about this. Now, any other question? Because I think we are both time. Emily, am I right? Yeah, we're at the time. So um, if you see any other questions in the chat, maybe you can answer them there and we'll move on to the next demo. Thank you so much. That was really great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, so, oh, so let me just run this final one. Uh, that one has finished running. Let me just show you how the, as we close. Uh, so after you run all the models, you just uh, run this final part to compare your results. And then you'll be able to see it vividly the models that performs well and then uh, those that do not really perform well. And then you see the Kappa statistics as well. Right. So this, this area, oh, it's, it's running now. Yes, as a summary. And then this is what I'm talking about. Then you can see the, the, uh, the ranking with respect to accuracy, and this kappa is here to counter to counter it. So what this is saying that you should not believe this accuracy. This kappa is giving a lower value, so you might end up choosing this one instead of these ones that are showing better accuracies, right? So there's a lot about model selection, the model building, the model selection, and uh, uh, finally. You can just uh, um, run it this way, and then we compare our model. So take it to 591, and then we see the final performance. So please uh, feel free to keep our researching in this area and uh, let's see so you can change this to results too and uh, run it oh you get you can see it can give you in another format in a better format if you zoom it here you'll see how it looks and it looks better thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, i'm open for more discussions in this regard. Have a nice time, everyone. Thank you so much.